Hello, good to see you, Pastor Sam, with a new uh, Bible study series. We are in the book of Acts. We're going to be in Acts for quite a while. We're going to kind of work through, not the entire book, not stopping uh, at every place, but we're going to kind of work through pretty much of the book. And it's an interesting one because it kind of picks up um, at the beginning of Acts, Jesus ascends into heaven. And um, then the disciples, my phone was ringing, the disciples are kind of left to spread that message of Jesus' death and resurrection with the world. The world. And they do this in uh, lots of different places, many different ways. What we're going to be focusing on today is healing. The first part of Acts is really kind of about Peter and what Peter does. So we're going to hear Peter and John healing a person. And this healing is, um, I'm not going to use the word proof, but is a sign of the message that they bring, the message that Jesus Christ is the Savior. And we're going to see that the healing of a person serves to show kind of kind of some force to the words that they speak. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are going to read Acts chapter 3. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple that is called the Beautiful Gate, to ask alms of those entering the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple asking for alms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people, utterly astonished, ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety, we have made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. Moses said, The Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me among your brothers. You shall listen to him in whatever he tells you, and it shall be that every soul who does not listen to that prophet shall be destroyed from the people. And all the prophets who have spoken, from Samuel and those who came after him, also proclaimed these days, You are the sons of the prophets, and of the covenant that God made with your fathers, saying to Abraham, And in your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God, having raised up his servant, sent him to you first, to bless you by turning every one of you from your wickedness. So kind of bridging... And this, this was not really intended. This is just one of those cool things. Kind of bridging, uh, we just came from quite a long series of series 
covering Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. And now, starting a new series in the book of Acts, and we actually have this really helpful bridge that Peter points out to us. It's in, um, you know, he says, Moses said, the Lord will raise up for you a prophet like me. And in the last devotion, this, this is crazy how cool this is, uh, I said that the Old Testament is really foundational to the new. And I said specifically uh, the first five books, we didn't cover Deuteronomy, but the first five books are foundational to the Old Testament and, and to the New Testament as well because they show us that Jesus is uh, a fulfiller of the old. And that's, that's what Peter is saying to us, right? He quotes Moses, the Lord will raise up for you a prophet like me, referring to Jesus. And so it's good that we have just come from, and if you, if you haven't watched those, you can go back and watch those devotions um, going all the way back. Gosh, Genesis 1. I don't know when we started that, but that was a while ago. Um, Genesis 1, we started talking about that, that. That it really does help you, you, to see how connected all of God's word is. That it's not like a lot of different things going on. But really, if I can simplify, boy, if I can distill the entire Bible in 30 seconds, that'd be crazy. Um, I'm going to give it a shot. That God saves his people from slavery in Egypt. That's Exodus. And the rest of the Old Testament is just how the people react. Applying that salvation to themselves. And are they going to listen to God or not? And then the New Testament is God providing salvation from our slavery, especially of death. Uh, through the death and resurrection of Jesus. And then the rest of the New Testament is applying that to our lives. Are we going to listen to Jesus or are we going to go off and do our own thing? There we go. That's it. That's a summary of the entire Bible. I don't know how long that took me. But um, Peter is, is, is making that connection very clear. And it's a connection that we can continue to see as we go through Acts. One of the... Uh, one of the things that the disciples are going to appeal to are the people's knowledge of the Old Testament, especially when they're talking to Jewish people. And Peter is almost exclusively talking to Jewish people. Um, he's going he's gonna to say, there's this thing that was said in the Old Testament, and that thing Jesus did or fulfilled. And that's kind of what he's saying here. Now, I do want to back up. I wanted to make that bridge because it's a really nice bridge between our study of the first four books is what we studied and now our study of Acts. So um, where Acts picks up, as I said earlier, Jesus has ascended into heaven. He's gone. And the disciples are starting um, their task in building the church bringing the message of Jesus' death and resurrection to all people. And one of the things that the disciples did that we don't do so much anymore, but are healing miracles, healing miracles. We're going to see quite a few of those in the book of Acts. And um, so Peter does heals someone who had been lame from birth. And this parallels a healing that Jesus did. Jesus healed in John 9, a man who was blind from birth. And there was this whole, uh, I'll call it a fiasco, right? The authorities were, were very upset that Jesus, not really, yeah, that Jesus had done it because he did it on the same. Anyway, I don't want to get sidetracked by that. But this miracle that Peter performs does parallel more broadly, other miracles, but especially that one. In that, in the case of Jesus, in John 9, the man had been born blind. And then here in Acts 3, the man had been born lame. We hear that in uh, verse 2. And they put him at the gate, uh, the beautiful gate, into the temple. And he would ask people for money, for alms, to be able to support himself. But Peter gives him something better. Peter doesn't have money to give him, but Peter does have the name of Jesus that he gives to the man. Peter says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, 
rise up and walk. And what I want to do, I want to go to um, something that Peter says. Peter says, so we're jumping down to verse 16. And his name, it would be Jesus' name, his name, by faith in his name, has, man, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Now, uh, it doesn't really say, and, and there's, there's kind of a curious um, ambiguity. Who, who has the faith? Right? Now, it's possible that the lame man has faith in Jesus. It's possible that he does. Um, but he doesn't really recognize Peter and John. And so I think, and this is one of those, this is my opinion. I'm going with what I find to be likely. Um, I don't know this for certain. But I think the lame man is a follower of God, not necessarily a follower of Jesus. So when it says, uh, back down here in verse 16, by faith in his name, I don't think that necessarily applies to the man. I think the faith is what Peter uh, and John is there as well, right? Peter and John's faith in Jesus makes this man strong because Peter calls upon Jesus name says in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk and so Peter's faith is um is the is the is the device that the link that allows this man to be healed which is a little bit different now because if we go back again comparing it to the ministry of Jesus when Jesus would heal someone now it wasn't always this case but he would sometimes say your faith has healed you go in peace like especially in the book of luke this is a common thing um, the woman who had the hemorrhage of blood who touched the fringe of jesus garment he says to her your faith has made you well go in peace um, there's a couple others and i just can't think of them off the top of my head but it's it's that person's faith is the mechanism that allows them to be healed and now now there's a little bit of a shift that it's Peter and John's faith in Jesus that allows this healing to occur and not necessarily the faith of the, the person being healed. So a little bit of difference now as we move into the life of the church that Peter and John, because they have faith in Jesus, because they know that Jesus will heal, they are able to heal other people like this man. Okay. Um, now we're going to get into it more next time, the fiasco that occurs. We'll get into it in the next devotion that, uh, the authorities again, get very upset with Peter and John doing this healing miracle. And so I want to kind of leave that for next time's devotion. What I'm going to focus on is I'll scroll up a little bit. Uh, everybody hears about this and they all run together and Peter takes it as an opportunity to preach, to witness to them about Jesus. It says, um, men of Israel, why do you wonder or stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made this man walk? Now it's, it's important that Peter says own power or piety, right? So it's not us. It's not that we're so good of uh, disciples. Right? It's, it's not our own power. That's an easy one. Right? It's Jesus' power that, that allowed this man to be healed. But it's not our own piety either. And I think that's, that's we might make kind of an unconscious assumption, either about ourselves or about other people, that especially in the case of like unanswered prayer. Right? And so what I mean by that is, I'm, I'm going to... Um, stick to the text, right? Peter, Peter's like, we'll call him the best disciple, right? Quote, unquote, the best disciple. So Peter can obviously heal people because he's the quote, unquote, best disciple, right? He's got the strongest faith. Um, he was around Jesus the most, but that's not the case. Peter's saying, it's not my piety, right? It's not my power, which is easy. We know it's Jesus' power, but it's not my piety, Either. It's not because I'm such a good, it's not because I'm the quote unquote best disciple, right? And I'm sure Peter would not agree with that statement anyway. So as we think about ourselves, it's not our own piety that causes prayer to be answered. And, and specifically what I have in mind is you will pray for something 
or you'll want something to happen. And you'll come to the conclusion, if I only had more faith, it would be happening. Or if I were a better Christian, then I would get what I'm asking for. Or then God would give me, right? If I'm a better Christian, then God will finally say yes to my prayer. He's been saying no because I've been a bad Christian, whatever that means. But that's not the case. That's not the case. Peter's saying it's not my piety. It's not because I'm a good person that makes this man that made this man well. It's just Jesus. Jesus wanting to heal this person. That's why this person uh, has been made well. So it's not a matter uh, thinking in your life. It's not a matter of you being a good Christian or a bad Christian or a good person or a bad person. Again, those are kind of those are kind of empty terms. They don't really have meaning, right? Uh, a bad Christian is kind of a like that doesn't mean anything, right? Or a good a Christian is just somebody who believes in Jesus. So you either do that or you don't. Right? You can be a Christian or you cannot be a Christian. But you can't really be a good Christian or a bad Christian. And and anyway, I'm getting a little sidetracked. That has no correlation to God answering your prayers or to God doing things or not. It's not like God is holding off. And then when you go to church two times in a month, now God is going to give you your prayer, right? That, that's not how he works. That's not, you can't do more Christian things to make God answer your prayer. And, and the converse is true. You can't do less Christian things, fewer Christian things to make God not answer your prayer, right? God is just, God is going to do what he wants when he wants it. And that's kind of, that's it. I got an email. I'm going to pause. Hopefully I remember where I am. Okay, that ended up being like a 20-minute pause. Um, anyway, uh, okay, faith. Peter's faith. There we go. So where do I want to go from here? Um, but, but Peter turns this into, hopefully this is going to make sense with what I said before. Peter turns this into an opportunity to witness. So there's a healing followed by this opportunity to witness to people about Jesus. And those, those two things are going to kind of go together. There's going to be a miracle, and the miracle will draw people and then provide an opportunity to witness. Now, I didn't say the miracle is so that they can witness, because that kind of objectifies the person, right? The lame man, then it's not, the lame man doesn't matter, right? Great, the lame man was healed. Now we get to tell people about Jesus. No, that objectifies people. But there is a healing, and since there was a healing, it provides an opportunity for witnessing to occur. That doesn't objectify the person. That um, that uh, that that kind of links the opportunity, the healing, and provides an opening for for um, witnessing and sharing about Jesus to occur, which may be the case in our lives too, that there are these moments, not necessarily a healing miracle, those are pretty uncommon, um, but there may be moments where something happens in your life or in another person's life, and that's the opening, that God is kind of nudging you to take advantage of, that now you can share about uh, what Jesus has done for you with this other person. So we'll continue. Um, like I said, we're going to uh, Acts 4 next time builds upon this. There's a whole fiasco that Peter and John experience because they have healed and especially because they are sharing about Jesus with other people. It is going to land them clear into trouble, but we'll see about that next time. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you that you continue to work good in our lives and ask that you would give us opportunities to share our hope and our faith with others. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we've got a whole book of Acts ahead of us, so we're going to be plugging through that each time, looking at something new and something different, but that continual idea of uh, Jesus has ascended, and now we get to participate in sharing that message with others. It was that way for the original disciples, and it continues to be that way clear for us. So I hope that you come back next time. God's peace be with you.